Hello there and welcome at Bob Proctor. And it's a real pleasure for me to be here with you at this event all over the world. I want to begin by congratulating Wolfgang Sonnenberg. Do you know, I believe everyone, every day, everywhere, has an idea of something great they could do. But like that, the idea dies almost as fast as it came to our mind. And of course, the idea is then stillborn. Nothing happens. That didn't happen with Wolfgang. Wolfgang got the idea and he thought, you know, everybody should win every day, and they should. And they certainly could. But it isn't going to happen by accident. And there, inspiration was born. Something that he could see that would live long past him and be all over the place. And he found one day in the year that hadn't been allocated to anything else. May the 7th. Now, I've had the good fortune of speaking to her three times for Wolfgang in different places. One of the early meetings, I uh, was fortunate enough to speak to the audience in Berlin. And it was a great meeting. First of all, I love Berlin. I love Germany. I think Germany and Canada are very much alike. I think climates, the people, everything. The languages aren't even that far apart, I don't believe. But at any rate, um, it was a great meeting. And the thing that impressed me more than anything was the fact that there was a focus on children. And the children were getting help, and children need help. Because our educational system is just not up to what we want it to be. Now, 57 years ago, I was fortunate enough to have a man give me this book. And the book changed the course of my life. And one day I woke up and I wanted to know exactly what happened to me. I'm going to share a little bit of that with you. And when I figured out what happened, all I wanted to do was teach it to other people. So hopefully the idea I'm going to share with you is going to help you turn Winspiration Day into a big win. You see, there's two things that you must know if you want to create wealth. And if you don't create wealth, you're going to be dependent on somebody else's money. Money is not a bad thing. Money is a very good thing. Money enables you to do good far beyond your own physical presence. I don't know what Wolfgang spent on Winspiration, but I know he's invested a lot of money in this. Now, it's not a business to him. It's something, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a labor of love, um, but it takes money. Nothing happens for nothing. It costs money. And all the money in the world is available to us, but we have to learn how to earn it. Now, there's two things you must know. First of all, you have to know where you are. And second, you have to know where you're going. And then you've got to get moving. You've got to go there. Now, why doesn't everybody do that? Well, you know, why are so many people stuck? You know, you could say, well, it's because they don't have goals. But I don't really believe that's the problem. I believe the problem lies right here in where we are. I don't think people know where they are and their paradigm is stopping them. Now, the average individual has no understanding of what a paradigm is. I'm going to show you here today. I want you to pay very close attention, and I want you to relate all this good information you get in your brain to inspiration, because that's where you're getting it. Now, you've got to make a decision. You've got to make a decision about exactly how you want to live and what you want to do. And most people never learn how to make a decision. A man told me that one day and he wrote an R on a sheet of paper. Then he put three letters down beside it, two H's and a W. And he said, Bob, that represents happiness, health, and wealth. And he said, do you know you can have anything you want? And he said, do you think I'm a happy person? And I had to say, yes, I think you are. He said, have you ever seen me sick? I had to admit I hadn't. He said, have you ever seen me when I was broke? Again, I had to admit I hadn't. Well, he said, Bob, you've got to be one of the most miserable people I've ever met. He said, you're always sick and you're always broke. Now, he was actually being kind. I was 26 years old. I was earning $4,000 a year, and I owed $6,000. And he said, do you ever read anything? And I said, no, I can't read. Now, that wasn't true. I could. I just didn't. And he introduced me to this book. And this is it right here. This is the book. Pages are falling out of this. I've been reading this since October the 21st, 1961, and I read it every day. I have it right here beside me in my studio. Now, I said, Bob, if you will do exactly what I tell you, you can have anything you want. That was a long time ago. I'm going to tell you, if you'll do exactly what I tell you, you can have anything you want. Do you know that in a matter of a year, my income went from 4000 6000 in whole 
Charles is earning $175,000. Now, I want you to stop for a minute and do the math on that because it's pretty interesting. In one year, I had multiplied my income by 43.75 times. Now, let me qualify that. I had two months high school. I had no business experience. I had a bad attitude and I had a bad work record. But I got this book and then I did what someone told me. For the first time in my life, I never had really followed direction. I was 26. And the man said, do exactly what I tell you. You can give anything you want. So I decided I would. And I've been doing that ever since. I learned a great lesson. I learned if you want to do something, go to someone who has already done it and then do exactly what they tell you. Ask them if they would help you get the results they're getting. And they will say yes. And then you got to do exactly what they tell you. Now, I've had seven mentors, but the first one got me on the right track. I've always done exactly what each one of them told me. Now, I'm going to suggest that if I can do that, you can certainly do this. I want to suggest that you turn your annual income into a monthly income. Now, that's only multiplying by 12. I multiplied it by 43.75, and I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't have the help that you're getting right now. You can do it. And then I took it over a million. That was the big magic number, one to earn a million. Well, I earned one. I've earned many millions. You know something? If I can, you can. I, you see, that's what makes me so adamant about this. I know if I did it, anybody can do it. So let's go ahead here. What I learn? Well, let's take a look at the mind and at paradigms. We talked about paradigms. Let's take a look at them. Now, pay attention to this because it's very important. This is one of the key things I learned. In 1934, Dr. Thruman Fleet down in uh, San Antonio, Texas, he was very involved in the healing arts, and he said, we have a problem in the world. We are treating symptoms. We're not treating the cause of the problem. Now, there's always a cause and effect relationship. When you have a disease in the body, that's an effect. What is the cause of it? And he said the cause always starts in the non-physical, so it had to start in the mind. And he said the problem is nobody's ever seen the mind. Nobody's ever seen it. So how do we work on it? And he said, I'm going to draw a picture of the mind. And that's what he drew, right there. And he said, let the mind fall into two parts. The large circle represents the mind. We'll say the conscious and the bottom circle is the subconscious. But the physical instrument that carries out the operations of the mind is the body. Now, I pointed out here, this is the most valuable idea I've ever learned. And I'm going to tell you, I'm surrounded by books. I have a magnificent library that I have built over the past 50 some years. This is the best idea I've ever got. So I'm going to show you something about it. There's the mind, the conscious mind, subconscious and the body. Now, the conscious mind is your thinking mind. You can think. Do you know not many people do? You say, oh, everybody thinks. Start listening to the conversations that are going on around you. It's going to become very evident that the people are not thinking or they wouldn't say what they're th saying. Watch what they're doing. They'd never do what they're doing if they were thinking. Conscious mind's a thinking mind. This is the educated mind. This is where we pile the books up. And I'm going to show you something about that. This is where our intellect is resident, okay? This is the intellectual mind. Now, the subconscious operates quite different. That's your emotional mind, okay? Now, because you can think and you have an intellect, you have the ability to choose. You can choose what you're going to do with your life. Wolfgang chose that he would take a portion of his time and a portion of his money, and he would develop something called Winspiration. And worldwide, people would be celebrating winning and helping people win on the 7th of May. Now, you've got the ability to accept or reject information. And if you reject information, you've got the ability to originate. Subconscious mind doesn't have that ability. That's all in the conscious mind. The subconscious mind must accept whatever you give to it. See, the subconscious mind is immoral. It's like the earth. It doesn't care what you plant, but it'll return what you plant. I love the way Earl Nightingale put it. He said, you can plant corn a sweet food, and not a sixteenth of an inch, inch away, plant nightshade, a deadly poison. One will grow up with just as great an abundance as the other. You can plant the positive or the negative, they'll both grow. Because the subconscious must accept it, and that's where it grows. Subconscious can't reject. Now get this, this is beautiful when you understand it. The subconscious mind cannot differentiate between what's real and what's imagined. It is not able to tell the difference. Okay, now that is facts about this. Let's look at where it all starts, okay? Here you are now, 
Remember what I've just shown you. Information is flowing into your conscious mind from the radio, from other people, from TV, newspapers. And a lot of it is absolute nonsense. They're telling you stuff that isn't even true. But they keep telling you and we keep listening. And then we let them influence us. The economy's going down. Do you know in the worst economy, there's people winning. In the best economy, there's people losing. You create your own economy. We've got the ability to reject all this negative information. But you know something? We don't do that. Do you know why we can? Because we can think, we can reason. And with reason, we think. Reason's a mental faculty. So we could say to that information, get out of here, just go away. But we don't do that. What do we do? Well, we do something much worse. We leave our mind wide open. And what we say about the subconscious, it has no ability to reject. All that information is going right into the subconscious mind and affecting the instrument you're living in called the body. Why do we do that? Well, we do it because we're programmed to do it. That's what a paradigm is. How did that paradigm form? Well, let's just close the window on this for a moment and move over here on the other side. And let's take a look over here. The first one was today. This represents you as an infant. This is how you arrived at home. When you were born, your subconscious mind is wide open. If you were taken out of an English-speaking home and put in a home that spoke Spanish, you grow up fluent in Spanish. If you were taken out of a Spanish home and put in a Chinese family in suburbs of Shanghai, you would speak Chinese. If you were born in a home where there's three or four languages, you'd learn all four. I worked with an associate in Kuala Lumpur for a long time, and they had a little boy four years old could speak four languages. The little boy didn't know the difference. He didn't have the ability to reject the idea, so he just learned all the languages. And so everything that's going on around us just keeps going into our subconscious mind. And this is how the image that we hold of ourselves was formed. That's right. We've got an image in our mind of ourselves, and it was formed when we were infants. But that wasn't the only idea. We had a multitude of ideas. In absence of clearly defined goals, we become strangely loyal to performing daily trivia until ultimately we become enslaved by it. Robert Heinlein was a um, science fiction writer. He wrote Strangers in a Strange Land one time in a book. And that's what he said. In absence of clearly defined goals. Well, we probably grew up in an environment where there was no clearly defined goals. And we became um, enslaved to daily trivia. And that's where most people live. Just listen to them. Okay? Now let's keep thinking. When this information that's going on around us keeps coming in, we form a paradigm. A paradigm is a program in our subconscious mind. Now that's in our little life. But here we are, 20, 30, 40 years later. Paradigm's still in control. People don't change much over a lifetime. Oddly enough. Well, they move ahead incrementally, small jumps. But how did I go ahead by 43.75? Bang, like that in one year. The right information, rejecting the bad information, and studying the good information. You see, that's what inspiration is all about. Now, let's stop and think. Here we are. School gave us valuable knowledge. However, school never taught us anything about paradigms, so we frequently don't do what we already know how to do. Superior knowledge... Inferior results causes confusion and frustration. Well, let's take a look at our drawing. There's the little stick person again, and there's all the books. Do you see what they do? They get you to read the book, and then they come and ask you questions. And if you can remember it, they say you've got it. Well, isn't it strange that people got it? They got all these books, degrees coming off the end of their business card, but the results wouldn't indicate they know anything. Why? Because it's not the knowledge they've got in their conscious mind that's producing the results. It's the paradigm in the subconscious mind that's producing the result. And if a person's going to change their results, they're going to have to change their paradigm. And if they don't change the paradigm, nothing changes. Hopefully you're going to see how you can start changing your paradigm. Because that is what Wolfgang wanted me to do. He said, Bob, share some of the information. Share it. Let it go all over the world. Just give it to them. Let them see it. So here we are. Good stuff. Now, I'm going to show you how school works. There is a person. Those are sensory factors. Those little antennae that just come up. That's you can see, hear, smell, taste, touch. So we go to school and we hear what the teacher says. And because we hear, we gather the information. What does that mean? Well, I just showed you the model. Gathering information. 
is a bunch of ideas of books just piling up in the conscious mind. And then they check you, they ask you questions. If you pass them, they'll say you know. Just because you can answer a question about what this man wrote, that doesn't mean you know it at all. That's not knowing. That's remembering. That's gathering information. Now, you hear with your ears, but I'm going to tell you something. You listen with your emotions. If you want to learn what I'm talking about, you got to listen to it. And the odds are pretty good if you'll learn, you'll, uh, or you listen, you will learn. Now, learning is when we consciously entertain an idea, we get emotionally involved in the idea, we step out and act on that idea, and we change the end result. You see, the key here, if I back it up a moment, the key is in the doing. You got to do it. Don't just repeat it. You got to do it. The truth is, everybody knows how to do better than they're doing. Problem is, they're not doing it. Okay? The feedback from what you do, the change the result, that's the learning experience. Everything else is gathering information. Now, paradigms. Let's think. Paradigms are a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior and almost all of our behavior is habitual. You could set a clock by most people. If they get up in the morning, they move into a routine. That's what happens. It's sad, but they do it. When paradigms stay in control, nothing changes. That's right. Now, let's take a look at this. Let's look at the areas of your life that a paradigm has enormous influence. It influences your perception. Your perception is how you see things. That's really what it is. Your paradigm, it, it controls your use of time. Have you ever noticed some people, they get virtually nothing done in a day, in a week? in a month. Some people accumulate or accomplish more in a day than other people do in a year. Get this. Everybody gets the same amount of time. We get all there is. So it's what we do with our time. That's what makes the difference. I watched Wolfgang Sonnenberg in a company one time with the same amount of time that everybody in the company had. And there were thousands of people selling in that company where he got a million dollar bonus from what he did. The others didn't do it, but they had the same amount of time. If he did it, you could do it. See, I always say, if I can do it, you can do it. If he does it, you can do it. Now look, use of time. Your paradigm controls your creativity. Most people think they're not creative. Writers are creative, musicians are, everybody's creative. You're God's highest form of creation. Your creativity controls your effectiveness and your effectiveness controls your productivity. Now, I'm going to tell you the ceiling is logic. <coughs> we let logic stop us. We go to dream, logic stops us. wonder what the Wright brothers were doing. Here's two young bicycle mechanics around 1903. They live in Dayton, Ohio. They're going to fly an airplane. They're going to introduce us to flight. Nobody had ever done it in thousands and thousands of years. They were going to do it. The neighbors must have thought they were out of their mind. But they did it, didn't they? And today, we just shoot all over the world. We're not a long ways away from anywhere. Now, not only does it control all those areas, your paradigm controls your ability to earn money. Now, look it. There's a box around us in these areas. And every time we go to improve them, we bounce into the wall. We just can't seem to get out of it. We're boxed in. That's the paradigm. Now, when you make up your mind you're going to change the paradigm, the walls come down. Nothing changes, but at least the walls come down. Now you can go. You're not going to hit the wall and stop. And I'm going to tell you something else. Just imagine how your entire life would change as you begin improving any or all of these areas of your life. The change is huge. And here's the most beautiful truth that you'll ever hear. It's permanent. You don't go back. Here I was earning four and I owed six. Today are in millions and I don't know anything. What's changed? Bob. If Bob can, you can. It's a beautiful idea. Now think of this. If all you changed was your perception, just change the way you look at things. Change the way you look at yourself. Whole, uh, what I'm doing here should be changing perceptions. You do that, your income will change. Make no mistake about it. Now most people are extras in their own movie. They say, oh, look at Bob, or look at Wolfgang, or look at Harry, or look at Betty, or look at Kim, or look at whatever. Uh-uh. And they make somebody else the star. 
You want to be the star of your own movie? What do you want? That's what you want to decide. Well, I'm on the screen. I want you to decide what do you really want because I'm going to tell you something. You can have it. Now, I know one thing. You want time and money freedom. That's edged right into the soul of every individual. Time and money freedom. You want the time to do what you want and you want the money so that you can afford it. But to get it, to be able to shape your future, you have to be willing and able to change your paradigm. Now, Joe Barker wrote that in a book in 1990. He was right, okay? You gotta get out of the box, my friend. Creativity is the opposite of routine. You must become very creative, and you can. I'm gonna take and show you. In times of rapid change, Eric Hoffer said, the learners will inherit the earth. Well, the learned find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. See, when people leave school, they think they're learned. There's no such thing as a learned person. There's no such thing as an educated person. That's a myth. You're either learning or you're not. Education isn't something you fill up and put a cap on. It comes from the Latin educo, meaning to do so to develop or to draw from within. The learners will inherit the earth because they never stop learning. They continually expand their marvelous mind. Okay? Now he qualified that because he said to learn, you need a certain degree of confidence, not too much, not too little. If you have too little confidence, you'll think you can't learn. If you have too much, you'll think you don't have to learn. And you know, I think we all fall into both of those categories all too often. And they go, oh, I couldn't learn that. Oh, I don't need to know that. Let's make up our mind we're going to stay with that certain degree of confidence, that fine line that's going to give us everything we want. Now quit trying to fight change. Buckminster Fuller, brilliant guy, created the geodesic dome. He said, never change things by fighting existing reality. Don't fight what's going on. He said, to change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Build a new model. You can, because you can dream. Download Nat King Cole's song, Pretend. He said, pretend you're happy when you're blue. It isn't very hard to do. And you'll find happiness without an end whenever you pretend. It's a beautiful song about using your imagination to create the life you want. Nat King Cole, pretend, okay? Now look, here's the A, B, C of goals. A, B, C of goals. Most people, they get locked in. They, they don't even dare go upstairs because that's a fantasy. And fantasy is supposed to be left for children. So we stick here. We say, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I know will happen. Well, that's sort of dumb because you're going to get the same results over and over again. But then you come to something like this and you say, I ain't going to go up here. I'm going to do what I think I can do. That's not going where you want to go. That's not what you want. That's what you think you can do. You know what you're doing? You're measuring your, your present resources with the money I got, the help I got. This is what I can do. So that's where I'll set my goal. There's no inspiration in that. None. So pretty soon you're back down here. And then somebody says something positive, you go back up there. But you get hit and you come back down here and pretty soon you're stuck right there. Why? Look at There's the three stages of creation. Fantasy, theory, fact. If you're going to get what you want, you've got to fantasize. Now, this is how it's done. You build a fantasy of what you want. You do that in your own mind. You never ask how you're going to get there. You just know you are. And then you have to turn that fantasy into a theory. This is where you go from using your imagination to using your reasoning factor, and you really start to think about it. Now, before you can turn the theory into a goal in your mind, because that's where it is in your conscious mind, you got to ask yourself two questions. Am I able to do this? Well, listen, I've studied the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, the Quran, the Torah, all the religious books, the Book of Mormon. Um, I've studied all kinds of psychology books. My library is loaded, and it's all on the same subject, on the marvelous mind and what we can do. Every one of them clearly indicate you and I have infinite potential. No one knows what we're capable of doing. So even though in 1961, I was a dead loser, just a slug, doing nothing, in one year, bang, like that, it all changed. You know why? I started to think. Am I able? Yeah, I'm able. But I had somebody convincing me I was able. I had a good mentor. Then, am I willing? 
That's it. Are you willing to pay the price? There's no free lunch. When you say yes to those two things, you get a goal. And then you take that goal and you impress it upon your subconscious mind, universal intelligence. It will take it and begin to move it into form. And that's how goals are reached. So you go from the fantasy to the theory of the fact. Then you're in the position to build bigger and better fantasies. Now that, my friend, is a great process. Let me show you how that works. What do you need? All you need is the will to do it. John Kennedy, the president of the United States way back in the early 60s, he asked Dr. Warner von Braun what it would take to build a rocket that would carry a man to the moon. And he said the will to do it. That's all it takes for you to reach your goal. Now let's look at it from a different perspective. Here we are down here with the A-type goals. We don't want this. We don't want to repeat performance. And then we go up here and we do what we think we can do. I don't think that's what we want either. We've got to go, we've got to start stretching. We've got to stretch our mind. We've got to ask ourselves, what are we really capable of doing? And we're going to go up where the air is a little thin into that high octane energy. We get up to a C type goal. This is where we're creating. This is what we really want to do. You don't have to know how, but you do have to know you're going to do it. It's a beautiful world. And you know something? Through Winspiration is being introduced to you right now. Make certain you use it. The man who started Winspiration, he understands all this. That's why he started this. You're not, he's not getting any money out of this. He's putting money into this. He wants you to win because he really believes everybody is capable and he's right. Now look, let's talk about money for a minute. Money's an interesting subject. And Winspiration likes talking about money because money builds. More money, more Winspiration, more cities more countries, more places. And if you want to take it to your city, you make sure that you let Wolfgang know because you can. Now let's look at this. There is a law of compensation. And the law of compensation is very clear. It states in no uncertain terms that the amount of money you earn is always going to be in exact ratio to the need for what you do, your ability to do it, and the difficulty there is in replacing you. Three points. The need for what you do, your ability to do it, and the difficulty there is in replacing you. The need for what you do. Hmm. See, I know there's a tremendous need for what I do. People have to wake up all over the world. No one's getting the results they want. That need is there. Whatever you're doing, the need is there. The need is there. You didn't create it. You don't have to create it. The second your ability, how good are you at filling the need? Now, I've become very good at filling it. But you know something, I'm not as good as I can be. So I study every day. Every day I study. I want to get better at it. Develop your ability to fill the need. And then you're going to be very difficult to replace. So where should the focus go? Well, focus should go exactly where it belongs. Your ability to do it. Become a master at whatever you do. And you do that, your stock's going to go up. It's the way it works. Look at there's only three strategies for earning money, M1, M2, and M3. Now, if you have children, you better teach them how to earn money because school's not going to do it. The teachers don't know. And if you're going to teach your children, lock in to number three. That's the strategy that makes the difference. The other two, they're just not very good. M1 is used by 96 out of every 100 people. It doesn't work very well for a very good reason. You're trading time for money, and it's got an inherent problem. You run out of time. See what I'm saying? 96 out of every 100 people use it, trading time for money. So it's only natural that we would follow them. They're such a large group. How could they all be wrong? Well, they always have been. The people on number two, there's only 3% there for a very good reason. They invest money, turn money. Number one, I stumbled on way back in the 60s. Didn't know what I was doing. It took me a long time to understand what I was doing. It's only used by 1%. How do you think I went from 4,000 to 175 to a million? I changed strategies, but I didn't know what I had done. So I couldn't even share it with anybody. But one day I decided I'm going to figure out what I've done. And ever since then, that's all I've wanted to do is share it with people. See, this 1% group earned 96% of all the money. What's on the other end of the scale? 96% of the people share the other four or five percent of the money. Look at 
1% multiply their time by setting up multiple sources of income. Do you know you're going to make connections through inspiration where you could set up joint ventures or set up multiple sources of income. You can have them all over the world. I know when I go to sleep tonight, I will have money coming in. I don't know how much, I don't know where it's coming from, but I know there's a lot of it coming in. I have money coming to me 24 hours a day, not by accident. I set up a system and you can set it up. We can show you how to turn your annual income into a monthly income. That's what our matrix program is all about. We just finished one, a week long program. That's right. This can be accomplished by setting up multiple sources of income. Now look here for a moment. Wealthy people have always had multiple sources of income. Now, right here in the center is the world. And our world is changing. There's no question about that. You know that and I know that. It's changing at a very rapid clip. And the world's not getting bigger. It's getting smaller. It's shrinking. The world's getting smaller. We're only hours away from anywhere. You can have business all over the world. Now, in the class I was teaching, which was Matrix, I could take that out and put inspiration in because you're mixing with a lot of people all over the world. And you can set up MSIs. MSI is a multiple source of income. You see, it's from different parts of the world. You can do this. I know Wolfgang Sonnenberg has all kinds of them. He probably has a few thousand. Say you have a few thousand? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're in about 15 or 20 million in a relatively short period of time. Now, listen, it's all by setting up sources of income. And you'll say, well, do all the sources, are they all the same size income? No, no, they're not all the same. Some are bigger, some are small, but they have one thing in common. They all flow into your bank. Isn't that nice? I like that. Napoleon Hill said, when money starts coming, it'll come so fast and furious, it'll make your head spin. You're going to wonder where it was hiding through all those lean years. And it just keeps adding up. Nice thing to know. Really nice thing to know. Now, that's an overview of all the slides. But keep in mind, it's taken me 57 years to put it all together. You don't have to take 57 years to execute it. You can take the ideas that you just got, bang, like that, put them to work. That's what Wolfgang did. He got the idea of inspiration. And he thought, I'm going to figure out how I can put this all over the world. And you know today, inspiration is being talked about all over the world. But it's going to cover the world better next year than it did this year. Do you know why? You have the opportunity to take and start a Winspiration meeting wherever you want. You make a commitment today that you're going to start a Winspiration meeting on the 7th of May next year. Send them a letter and say, listen, this is really a cool concept. I want to help. And I guarantee you, you do that and you will. I want to thank you very much for your attention. I want to thank Wolfgang. I sincerely want to thank him because, you know, givers gain. I love the opportunity of giving whenever I can. He's given me that opportunity on a few occasions with inspiration. He and I are good friends. We don't see each other that much. We're like thieves in the night. You know, he's busy, I'm busy. We're going in different directions. We're both very busy business people. You've got him to thank for this. I want to thank you.